Hello <laughs> and welcome Ooh, to the Katie's Arms, which I was just about on time for, so I'm quite proud of myself for that. And I'm hoping our Wi-Fi is going to work. Um, so just a quick wave for people who are going to let me know, yes, whether they can hear me or not. Thank you for that. And it is only um, two in the afternoon where I am, but I thought, given this was a Katie's Arms, it was only reasonable and if not required, uh, that I start drinking with the rest of you. I'm not sure what that says about the rest of my afternoon. There have also been comments about this top and the fact that maybe I had a boob job. Thank you very much for that um, thought. I haven't. It's just that this top, I'm not sure what's happened. Either I've got bigger, the top's got smaller, or it's just loads more squishy than I remember. Because I'm kind of like, I, I think it's just a squished effect. So um, just so you all know that, that there's nothing else going on there. Not that I really suppose have to explain myself, do I, in that way. And also someone earlier said to, um, to me on her, uh, can I put more clothes on, please? So just to that um, individual who's sort of a bitter old person, I should imagine, um, if you wouldn't mind awfully just fucking off, that would be great. Um, and I say that because I'll wear what the bloody hell I like. Uh, or nothing if I so choose. Um, I'll turn up naked on the Katie's Arms or my Instagram or anywhere if I, or the High Street actually, such as it was, if I so choose. And actually, it's not for you to tell me anything about what I want to wear or don't wear, because you've got a choice, haven't you? You could bugger off, and I'd really rather appreciate it if you did. Um, something else you should probably know, and it's the reason you're also single and mostly only have sex with yourself, is that women typically at a certain age, mine, don't really dress for any other bugger. We just do it depending on how we feel. So if we're feeling a bit shit, we might dress a bit shit. If we're feeling a bit hot, we might not have many clothes on. But I can tell you for certain, it's not really done for anyone else's pleasure because we're quite over that. Unless we choose not to be over that, in which case we'll be wearing black lace and nothing else and nipple tassels. Right, so I thought today we would do some questions and you guys have been kind, kind enough to submit those um, in the hope as well that I do actually answer some questions. As we all know, I typically get started at the Katie's Arms, which is supposed to be your pub, and us sat in the pub having drinks together, generally laughing at the world, or me, or me and the world, which is like being in the pub with me, <laughs> which is why I'm brilliant to go to a pub with. Um, so that's what happens, but then typically I just biffle baffle on for a whole half hour and everyone's like, well, you didn't answer shit all. And that's also very true. But you know, suck that up as well, frankly. I've got lots to say. <laughs> this is like therapy. So this is what we do at Katie's Arms. We just, um, we just chitty the chit chat and um, people write comments on here, which I occasionally read out. Most of them involve naughty things and rude things. So I try and ignore those. And some people are just genuinely kind, which is also very great. Um, other people want to see bits of me that I'm really not going to show them. I should also point out at the moment, there is a kid outside repeatedly shouting the same kid's name. If he continues to do that throughout all of Katie's arms, there is going to have to be a moment where we pause here, we'll keep going. I will have to disappear and just, just tell that child to shut up. So um, I don't know what that would be in the language where I am, but that is gonna also have to happen because I can hear it in the background. I'm, I'm one of those people that once I dial in on something, I have to just sort out the issue. So that could happen. If you are the little boy shouting another boy's name, quit it, or I'm gonna come around there and twat you one. Mustn't threaten people on social media. So let's go quickly to questions before I lose my, oh, I did just want to tell you a quick funny story. So I was in the supermarket, should I put my drink down for a moment now? Drink it, okay, hold on, talk amongst yourselves. I was in the supermarket, right? And I had to put on my little mask to go in there and that's fine because at no point am I going to have some sort of silly row with super people who are working for no money an hour about a mask or not. I'm just going to put it on my face so I can get into the supermarket and I don't want to get anybody into trouble. So I'm now in the supermarket and I want to buy moisturiser because as you can see I'm drying out faster than a bloody, you know, nun in a convent and my skin's about to fall off. Many people have comments about my skin anyway. So I go to the moisturiser aisle. I don't understand anything or what I'm purchasing, but I see something and it, it appears that it has a rose on it, right? So I think, 
I know, just smell it, just to check that it doesn't smell like, you know, old ladies or like slightly smell of wee or something or any of the things you might not want to smell of. What would those be? I don't know. So I pulled down my mask, which I kind of had off anyway, and I got the moisturiser and I opened it kind of surreptitiously because I don't want to be like weird, weird old lady in aisle, whatever, smelling stuff. And I squidged it. And um, as I squidged it to smell it, it kind of came out and went across my face. At which point I had to try and clear that up and get my mask back on and not show the staff that I had covered my face in the moisturiser that I hadn't bought yet because I'd taken my mask off. That is just sort of standard 10 minutes in my life. And I stand there thinking, what the shit? I watched someone earlier sneeze. I don't know what the etiquette is, right? You guys might know on um, what happened to your short hair. Oh, we could add that to the list, but I haven't brought my pen. If you remind me later, we'll try. Um, uh, yes, that does sort of happen to me a lot. I don't know what the etiquette is for sneezing. I've seen people in masks sneeze, actually, in the mask which is clearly disgusting, because then you're breathing it in. I've seen people take their masks off to sneeze. That makes me laugh as well, because it's like, ah, shit, get COVID now, I'll put my mask back on. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's all a load of old shit anyway. Right, questions, questions. Um, the hair bit, if I can remember, will come with the epilepsy bit. We'll see what happens. So someone was asking, because they're just recently new to this. I, w I mean, that is unbelievable in itself, is it not? I've been around for a full, what, how many years is it? Like 16 years I've been gobbing off in front of this nation and many others and you've only just found me, which is inexplicable. Um, and then secondly, like, who the hell are you, right? And uh, this happened to me quite recently. I was doing stand-up um, at a venue in Denver, in Colorado. So I had 300 people. We sold out kind of twice over. Uh, we had a wait list and, um, We'd added seats that we weren't allowed, all the rest of it. And I was going through my kind of, I was just, we were just having the best time. And um, I certainly was, I sought everyone else. And then sort of at the end, we did some bits and forwards and people were asking things. Someone put their hand up and went, who are you? <laughs> so there is that, right? There is this sort of missing bit between people that have just found me and people that have kind of grown up with me for 16 years or people that just hate me anyway, whatever. So the, the pre-seed version of who I am is, <laughs> I mean, biggest bitch in Britain, right? Most hated woman, most hunted woman, most banned woman. I think I've got that title back, right? Having been banned from a few more things subsequently. So all those things are like big monster. And then if there's an evil villain, that was definitely me. Uh, I actually started out um, being sponsored through university by the intelligence corps going to the Royal Military Academy and passing out as an officer in the British Army with the Intelligence Corps. And I signed up, and I don't know if any of you know Sandhurst. Um, let's say it's not the easiest course to pass through. It's not like a standard university course. <laughs> you will never be as cold, dark, lonely, hungry, hurt in your life. <laughs> well, actually, I've probably surpassed that now, but in your early life, it will never hurt as much as Sandhurst hurts anyway. Came out of there and I signed up for 35 years. So I promised um, the gentleman who gave me a 35 year regular commission um, that uh, I would serve my country for 35 years. And they don't hand out many of those, or certainly they didn't back in the day. They probably don't hand them out at all now, right? 35 years, a contract for 35 years. Uh, but I signed it, I meant it. I told them I'd be the first female general. Long and short is, I'm also, and was also, epileptic. I think, I believe, I am still the only person on the planet, the only epileptic ever to make it through a Royal Military Academy training um, and to become an army officer. But I had to be medically discharged, and um, my joke to cover the fact that it's the most awful thing in my life is that I say that an epileptic with a semi-automatic weapon might not be my best idea. <laughs> Someone's saying, answer questions, please. This was a question. For God's sake, keep up. So I had to leave the military, went into management consulting, worked with all military men um, in a company and I was the only female. And it's still the language I understand. So you put me near military, boys or girls, it's still to me like comfy shoes or comfy clothes. Like I really, I really, that's where I was always supposed to be. It just so happens that I wasn't allowed to stay. And that will always be uh, the thing. And I, I think it explains a lot of me now. So, 
switch, 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 switch up into management consultancy businesses, um, helping put military principles, like basically if you're a business and you want to get shit done, you bring us in uh, as a team at the consultancy I work for and we got shit done <laughs> and we really got stuff done at a high level. So I was then in Madison on Madison Avenue. I lived in the East Village. I was in New York for six, seven, eight years maybe. And uh, you know, high levels in, in Bartley's and in Reuters and Diageo and all big businesses. And I was this kind of scary woman that came along and got shit done. I came back to the UK and I needed to change things up massively. I had two children under the age of, well, one and a half. And my husband just left me for um, the secretary, which, um, I don't have uh, any issues with that now. At the time, it was really hard. And so I was a single mother of two under two. And in fact, I didn't even, I had to come home from the maternity ward alone because um, my husband left me before I even got out of the hospital with my second daughter. So, uh, yeah, no one does as people are just saying, we didn't know this stuff. I know. I guess this is one of the weird things, right? I have all this stuff, but we all have all this stuff. All of us have all this stuff. I'm just like a regular, everyone else, right? We all have all this stuff. But this is all the truths of me. I never ever shared because I never wanted sympathy. I never wanted people to say, well, she's playing the victim. And I still held all, and still hold all the opinions I held, even though all of this has gone on in my life. And even though everyone was calling me a monster and I know I'm not. So that's been a weirdness, right? Anyway, I can share it now, it's fine, it's whatever. And so I came home from the hospital alone with two children and I knew I had to change things up and I applied to be on The Apprentice. And that's when I switched, I guess, from being military, military, military business to media. And I didn't know at the time, I genuinely went on that show thinking, change of scene, find a way to provide for the children, you know, I'll get kicked out near the middle and come out and people will think, oh, she was really kind of fun and she kind of knew what she was doing and she didn't take any shit. I thought that would just be me. Uh, but I got all the way to the end and then fired Lord Sugar. And how that actually went down is obviously nothing like the final version they made me reshoot. It was just me saying, I'm really sorry. I'm not desperate enough for this position. There's other people more desperate than me. Thank you for the opportunity and he was dead sweet and he was like thank you for being honest thank you for saying that we'll see you later and then i got called back in and we had to make it about childcare or something so that was the apprentice and that kicked off the whole entering public life where i've been i guess for 16 17 years now and i had to reinvent myself again i became a columnist for the sun and then daily mail and then eventually kind of the best known i guess best paid yes uh, female in the media in the UK and that brings with it uh, lots of competition lots of jealousy lots of people who don't want you there um, so I had my radio show which is still my second love after the military and I miss I miss I miss it's the one thing if I get one thing back from all the things that have been taken it wouldn't be my family home and it wouldn't be the highest paid jobs or my column at the mail or whatever. It would just be that radio show and for no, for no money, really. I'd, I'd, I'd do it just and ask people to like support if they wanted. Yeah, so that's also my heart because people would ring me from their kitchen. Like a bit like this is, this is something near what I'm trying to get to, right? And people would ring me from their kitchen in their pajamas. Ooh, gets me upset. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Wait. So, <clears throat> people would ring from their kitchen because they couldn't, they had no other way of being heard. And that's why I'm very, very cross with myself for being fired from the radio because I took away people's opportunity to be able to have their voices heard. And I remain cross with myself uh, for that now because it was a unique thing in the heart of London. And I see all these other pretenders um, doing what they're told to do and saying what they're told to say, not at all reflecting uh, ordinary people like you and me. And I know that that let people down in a way that I don't reconcile with at all. 
So that was radio. And I remember walking into BFAR, I'd, I'd tweeted about uh, terrorism in the UK, which saying I just I wanted it over, a final solution to that. And of course, that was twisted to be anti-Semitic. I'm like, you know, spend more time in Israel than, partly than anywhere else. Anyway, no excuses. I gave them an open goal. And if you're someone like me, you can't give people that want to silence you an open goal. So I own all of that as well. And I remember walking in, and as I walked in to the studios, this lady grabbed me and she goes, I love you, I love what you do, I love your show. Um, I lo and actually, we're still friends now. Like, she sends me little messages when the next thing happens to me, just to keep me going. And she's a Jewish lady. And so the irony was, irony, is that I walked in to be fired by, a, by my boss and his sidekick. He brought legal help, obviously. But a Jewish lady in the foyer had said that she loved the show, but I was being fired for anti-Semitic tweets, which weren't, they were just a terror in the UK. No excuses, I was fired. So I left that and that's always been my sadness is losing that. But the thing about my mainstream media stuff, right? All the gigs, people say she's moved into obscurity. She's a no one, she's nothing. I'm also very good with that. I'm good with being a no one and nothing and not being in the mainstream media apart from radio because I would never do what I was told. I would never not write something. I would never not say something. And I spent my time with men online, just being on the road, Calais, Italy, traveling with migrants from uh, the coast of Libya, uh, living in the jungle, sleeping on Skid Row, uh, sleeping on the white farms of South Africa where they are being hunted from their land. I would never not tell the truth as I saw it and it became impossible for my editors to keep me on. I had to be removed and I was removed at the highest levels. I would get these warnings from friends inside places like The Guardian and they'd say, you know, at the editors meeting this morning, they agreed it's you they're going after. So I would have people tell me that I was being removed. So I knew, and this was a long time before cancel culture, right? But even with all that, yeah, I still am fine with it all the hate, all the endless attacks, the taking of my jobs, my family home through litigation, um, which we can talk about another time. Um, the attacks on, you know, a couple of people came to chop my head off. They're now in prison. Uh, there's a play, if you Google, um, the assassination of Katie Hopkins was commissioned by, partly by the British government funding, your, your money actually, that was after my actual assassination attempt. There was a play called The Assassination of Katie Hopkins and those billboards went up around the country, which is a hard thing to explain to little children and elderly parents. No sympathy. You put yourself out there, right? You've got to suck all of this up. I suppose the difference is there's a massive distance between, and this is where maybe we are starting to see this, right? Is, um, there was a massive distance always between what people thought they knew of me and who I am. And I never sought to try and fill that distance. And maybe I am a little bit now. I don't think I'm actively trying to fill the distance. I'm just, just sharing stuff I wouldn't have shared whilst I was in mainstream. But the me that I knew was very different to the me that everyone was hating. And in a way, I guess that's one of the reasons it was okay and has been okay in a process of dealing with the hate at, at very, very, you know, life-ending levels um, in every sense. There's definitely a sense when they're coming for your money. Your, I don't have a bank account now. I don't have PayPal. I don't have a home. I can't own anything because they come and take it. Um, come for your head. But I'm, I feel like, you know, the, the thing that's important about that is if you know yourself, even though they hate this thing, they still don't know that you're just being true to everything you signed up for and promised to do for 35 years. And I think that's the truth of what I do and why I do what I do. It's because I'm still serving a contract that I signed to fight for the country, even though the army wouldn't let me stay. And if they'd let me come back tomorrow, maybe I could do army radio, be like, Come back to this, come back to this. <laughs> um, so that, so people say the second question, I know, right? We just did 20 minutes on one question, shit me. It was kind of a lot of bio, but that's why I've ended up where I am. Um, I really, really believe 
that our paths, right, in life are already set. So I believe that your path is set. And the only thing that happens in life is that you wander from your path, right? So you imagine, life says, I must have this, I must have a sensible job, I must have a mortgage, I must be married, I must have two children, and I must have a nice car, and I must have a very fast Wi-Fi, and I must have shit this and shit that and whatever, right? And we go, right, that's what I must have. The truth is, your path is set, right? I believe this, you don't need to believe shit, but, but this is where I go. And the more you throw yourself to it, right? the more your true path reveals itself. So anytime you feel yourself like trying to control, like as if you're on a bike, anytime you put the brakes on, you're taking yourself off your true path. I'm not saying brakes are a bad idea, particularly to my daughter, Poppy, who goes down that whole freaking hill with both hands off the handlebars. Poppy, put your hands on the handlebars, for God's sake. We aren't blessed with good faces, don't smash yours up. Um, but the moment you break in life, you take yourself off your path, right? And the more that you can throw yourself to the path, the more you are free. And it's why I'm in this hugely fortunate position I am in now, because I can throw myself to the path because there's nothing they can take from me, save for the ending of me, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and I believe my family are somehow protected. I choose to believe that as well. And you could say, well, you daft old fool, but that's my choice. So they say, don't they, if you throw yourself off the cliff, your wings unfurl as you fly down. Now don't throw yourself off a cliff and clearly you don't actually have wings. So freaking don't go topping yourself on the edge of bloody Dover. Because you're bloody, you know what happened? If I tried to kill myself off the white cliffs of Dover, I'd land in a freaking migrant ferry boat, wouldn't I? I'd land in an inflatable freaking boat and I'd end up not dead being mm -mm -mm by a bunch of migrants that would be that would be classic my life and the mirror would report racist hopkins lands on immigrant penis that's how that would be reported please so there's a whole chunk here we haven't done which i think we'll save for another time because it's massive in itself which is epilepsy and me we'll do that another time it's massive and I, I, it will get set me off any, any day of the week and I don't want to lose our flow, which is throwing yourself. So people ask me all these travel questions. We've discussed this, right? Like I'm some sort of travel expert. And I'm like, shit, I don't want to be a travel freaking expert. Never wanted to work at Thomas Cook. I mean, love Thomas Cook. I remember going into Thomas Cook to explain that I'd booked a holiday for my family and I'd booked every single one of us with the wrong surname. <laughs> Ah, uh, you should have seen their faces. Hmm. Um, but people say to me, how do you do this? How do you, you must be double jabbed. I'm never gonna persuade you I'm not double jabbed. I'm not, but I'm not gonna try and persuade you because you don't freaking believe me. So believe what the fuck you want, I'm not. What do you want me to do, show you my arms? Those slices are the sewing back on of both my arms using my hip bones. <laughs> More on that another time. So, uh, yes, deciding where to travel for me now is just a mindset, right? I'm going to do this and then I make it happen. And that's always been true in my life, right? I'm going to do this. <laughs> and I would say to people, I'm going to end with some top tips for surviving life, right? Because I'm very excited for these. But what you have to kind of do sometimes, many times in my life, many times, my husband leaving me with a baby inside the hospital, <laughs> you know, walking out of the apprentice being the most hated woman in Britain, uh, being kicked out of the army for being epileptic. <laughs> being caught naked on the front pages, explaining that to my boss. <laughs> A couple of jihadis coming to chop my head off, <laughs> losing my jobs. <laughs> so there's been many times, right, where life has been challenging because usually of something I've done. But sometimes what you have to do is you have to put on this thing, which I've done a lot of my life, right? You put on this brave you, you can do this and you ask the rest of you to catch up. I'm going to do this. Can come on. Like you, 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 you are going to. And then you're like looking behind you, it scared you and you're going, get pissing well, fucking show up, would you? <laughs> That's been a lot of my life. And I've just been writing about this, but like even being fired, right? If you're gonna be fired, you know, be fired, but you keep it together, right? You're gonna keep it together this is me walking out the radio shows. You're gonna keep it together 
you are going to act like you you like you're acting like a Vita, right? And you're going to be magnificent. You are going to walk out like you've got an aubergine up your ass, right? And you're going to ask the rest of you to catch up and then get around the corner. Then you can shit yourself, eat chocolate bars, cry, ring home, piss yourself, whatever you want to do. But for a moment in time, you're going to be that brave person, right? That's how you do that. So that's how you get fired well. I am writing help. Okay, this is not a book plug. I'm not friggin' John Bowen, but Alison Hammond. <laughs> love Eamon Holmes. Love you. I love you. I'm so sorry. I love you. Won't go into that. That's politics about ITV. So I am writing help. Help will be coming soon. I promise. I nearly. I'm nearly done. And it is basically all of my biggest disasters. All of this. It's basically Katie's aunt in a book, and how you handle it and what I would do, and how much I've cocked up, and how it's been all right. And I think it will be helpful. Rude was my first book, and the only thing I'd say about that is it's helpful in the sense it has a lot of this person that you see here in it. I put a link for the audio books, I think it's cheaper or free even, in this Instagram thing. Don't feel obliged to read it, but if you're epileptic, or you have a condition, or you have like a, big struggle and you don't think you're going to make it, go to the audiobook, see look, <clears throat> chapter four I think it is, don't read anything else or listen to anything else but I would say maybe read that because I think it will help you see that I'd be so pissed off I'm telling you if I'd ended my life at any point I would not have got to do all this stuff, right? Right and what did else did I want to say before I go, we've got three minutes because we have to be on time, thank you for all your comments, thank you for being here, thank you. Um, Yes, yes, when you don't know what to do next, I'm thinking specifically about care home staff, nursing staff being taken in to be given their meetings, right, where you're being told you're gonna to be dismissed because you haven't had the state injectable. Oh shit, I haven't done the question about, okay, never mind, another time. Try, right, so you go in for that meeting. A, you, you go in there with your best underwear, your nicest shoes, you have a shower, you shave your legs, you go in there like the best version of you, right? Whatever that is, you know, substitute all those things for things that matter. Boom. You sit there, you listen to them dismiss you because you didn't have the state injectable, okay? Yes, thank you. No, thank you. Yes, please. Don't give them any of yourself. Give them nothing of you. Give them no, give them no currency from your heart. You become all military discipline, right? And when you walk out of there, make them fire. You do not, you will not leave your caring position. You make them fire you. They will have to let you go because you care and you will not leave your patients. And you walk out of there and you put your head up and you put your shoulders back and you act like a Vita if you have to all the way to your car and round the corner till you can't see any fat Tessa from HR with her shit blonde highlights and her shitty shoes and her horrible ankles and then you lose your shit, right? You are gonna hold the line. And that's part of the principle of this life, is sometimes we have to hold the line. You could say, yes, Katie, but what the shit happens tomorrow? Never the mind. Sometimes we just have to get through the next thing, right? Don't worry about the next thing next, but for right now, you're gonna worry about the next thing. And if that is being Evita and being fired with you, being able to reflect on yourself thinking, yes, I rocked that. <laughs> that's what you have to do. Yes, so that, it's not about pretending, it's about respecting who you actually are. And when people ask about, you know, how do I deal with hate? It's always been that I know who I am. And sometimes you know when they're coming for your head and your jobs and your home, and they're reporting my children to social services, hoping they'll take my children, that still happens. And social services have to visit my children and check that I'm not sexually assaulting them, as is, um, alleged often by the left who also hashtag be kind whilst trying to get my children taken. Um, is that it's, it's, it's not about acting, it's about having respect for yourself and knowing who you are. And all the way through all of this, people come for all those things. I've known who I am. And it's always been okay because I've been able to say, you must do this too. I'm not a bad person, I'm a good person. I just want the best for everybody. And that's the key. If you can say that, you're doing great. And everything else will fall into place. The other thing, just before I go, is 
One thing you must also do, just before you walk into that room to be dismissed or walk to that thing to meet the guy who's gonna tell you something horrible or deal with family who don't want you to come to the funeral because you're not injected or whatever it is, whatever in your private life, is do remember to breathe right all the way in and all the way out. I appreciate you don't need to be shown how to breathe, but you sort of do. And I haven't gone all kind of like, oh, vegan, holistic, oh, come with me to Indonesia and let's sit on a rock. I'm not doing that. I eat meat, a lot of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but that was so inappropriate, I'm so sorry. Why am I such an asshole? Right, all I mean is when we get, um, you know, under pressure, we don't even realize it, right? So I'm thinking of times in my life where it's been very, very harsh, very harsh, like the, that award I got. We'll talk about that another time as well. You can start, you don't realize, but you, you only have a shallow, Breathing. It's a bit like when you cry, you know, you do, you do that thing, right? You completely lose your shit. That's actually what you're also doing before you cry. Okay, so you have to just stop and just say to yourself, okay, breathe in all the way in and all the way out, right? And you do that again and maybe a couple more times and then off you go. And it will change your whole dynamic. It will change the way you hold yourself and it will change your ability to function because you're gonna supply yourself with some of the oxygen you need. Don't be the squashed shrew, right? That just got brought in by the pussycat, <laughs> right? Be the big fat mole that, this is literally just coming out of my face as you can see, that just came up from underground but is now having a big long slow breath. Okay, big fat mole, not little shrew. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I feel like we covered loads, right? <laughs> How exhausting for you all. Um, I will see you all next week when I will be, if all things go to plan, someplace new and I will be able to tell you and it will all become clear and we can all clappy clap clap and I've got a great tweet from someone on the left about what I won't be able to do with my life anymore and this should be the perfect way of me saying <laughs> just watch me so let's do this next week um, I'll let you know if we're changing times or anything crazy I will peg in my head that we didn't talk about lots of the questions I promised I'd answer we will do epilepsy sometime as well or anybody with a condition um, and we will remember together that everybody has a choice and must have a choice. And if whatever you choose to do for the best for you or your family, as long as you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a good person and I'm trying my best for my family and I want everyone else to be the best they can be. It's all okay. Right, I'm four minutes over. I've stolen four minutes of your lives. I will see you all um, next week and I'm always here if you need me, katie at katiehopkins.co.uk.